We've sourced all the parts we're gonna need for this gantry crane, but we need to make a few. What do, we, what do we need to do first, you think? Well, I, I think you always start with the foundation, which is the, the base the lay, that the casters will be on. Yep. And build up from there. And we're going to use this, what is this, 4x6 box steel. Yeah. It's actually a toolbar for a sprayer for ripper shanks. So that should be heavy enough. We're going to cut it in half and cut these ends off of it and then make our A-frame up from there. I think this is going to be more than heavy enough. This thing's going to be super overbuilt. Why are you excited, Dad? I'm anxious to get the engine and radiator on. Soon weather warm up and get some painting done. And what's the other good news today? Good news is torch time. Yeah, you love your torch. Yeah, I like torching. We got a lot of torching to do because we got to cut these ends off of here on both sides so that we can have a good straight cut. I don't have to go through this thick part. Get we rid of the weld. Might lose a little bit. Yeah. Here I'll try to cut as close as I can. Trim it. Because we'll uh, have to weld on that and grind it anyway. Because our leg's going to attach out here. Right. And then once you get these cut off, we'll find our center and cut it in half. I'll get a wrench over here and just take this thing off. I'll just cut it off. Don't waste your time. <laughs> Dad doesn't miss an opportunity to use the torch. That's about 3 16 I think. I think it is. We can definitely make something out of this in the future. It's quarter. Quarter inch? Yeah, it's quarter. But it's square too. I mean, this thing is going to be fine. See, this is welded at an angle for yeah. some reason. We want to straighten that up and stay inside of this weld here. So... We could cut this off. You could leave it fish plated on there, it won't hurt anything, but no. it's a lot more to cut. Not bad for freehand, huh? Nah, looks pretty good. I think you've operated a torch before. I'm not as good as most people, but I get by. I'm gonna get the grinder out and start cleaning up these ends. Dad's finishing the cut up there. <laughs> we keep getting bombed by snow falling off the roof up here. Maybe I'm not cut somewhere, I forgot. Yeah, flip it up, let me look at it. It's going. Is it? Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, it's telescope. We gonna leave these ears or you want me to I'll cut, them, cut off. them off? We don't want those in the way. After cutting those ends off, we've ended up with about 10 foot 10. So each leg's gonna end up right around five foot five. Now I see why they call it the daily grind. Yeah. We got a lot of grinding to do. Find our center. I guess go on the long part or the short part? Uh, it doesn't matter, just find our center. This side's pretty square, except we are uh, 10 foot, 10 and one half. Okay. Make everything right off of this top, I think, because our ends are not going to be square. You're going to use this as a top? Yes. Five foot five and one eighth. Want me to mark it? Yeah. Right on the mark. I just say take a square, we'll measure it all the way around, soapstone, cut it. Now I'll clean up these ends with a grinder. From the trolley wheel where I'll run on the beam, you'll never, probably the hook will be more like right there. Yeah. That's call it 27 20 let's call it 28 inches we're trying to figure our working height of this hoist to determine exactly how tall we want to make it and the limiting factor here is we want to make sure that we can clear that door 
We just double checked our math and we figured our working height and the exact height that we want to have this with the hoist and the trolley and everything we have. Figuring our trolley to beam, bottom of beam, to the highest you can get your hoist hook, which is several inches from the, the uh, hoist, we will end up with a 10 foot 2 inch working zone from the floor to as high as you can get the hook. Easily a 10 foot working area. More than enough to... Yeah, I think that's adequate. Clear our engine onto the tractor. We could pick up the back of the tractor. We could pick up that whole H if we wanted to with this thing. And it leaves us 13, eight, uh, 6 overall height so we can get out that door with 6 inches to spare. Right. We're doing kind of a mock layout here on the floor in the shop to get our angles correctly in our height. We just did a little bit of math here, and I think we're gonna need to be cutting our pipes at about a 10 degree angle. And I just figured out that angle from the distance we measured on that side of the triangle and the distance for the overall height. And that should give us about 10 and a half degrees that we're gonna need to cut our pipes going up to the top. It's really actually a more steep angle than I have pictured here. My nephew David's out here giving us a hand and he's learning welding. He's an uh, a aspiring welder. So look this guy up in a few years. I'm pretty well centered, I think. Yeah, you're fine. you want it there? Yeah, right, right there. You know, that's pretty good. Yeah. Actually. That's because we had a good subgrade. And we're going to index the top of the pipe so that we can reference this. And when we cut our angle, that's going to be the opposite direction on the other end. That's the mark on the top of our pipe so that we can... So just slide it down yeah, here. Yeah, make sure we get it referenced correctly. Now put that on those marks. You got it? Yeah. So we're 11 foot 7 there to that side of the angle and then 11 foot 7 to the other side of the angle. So your angle will go out there, yes. Like this. Yes. Got our cut off on that side, spun it around. We're going to cut this side off over here and keep our fingers crossed. Looking at the angle, it looks good, don't it? Yeah, it look oh, good. I moved my thing, but yeah, we're... It looks look pretty good. good. Yeah, I think so. Okay, I think we just need to do this, what, three more times? Three more times, yeah. And we got this. So you and David just checked this, and what are we? We're right on our uh, 11 foot 7. We're right on the and money. And our angles look beautiful. See, who did the math on this angle? Yes, I'll give you that. You did good <laughs> math. 12 foot 6. Right on the money. So the top of the beam will be 13.6. Yeah. That arm's cut. We're going to do the rest of these off camera. There's our second one that's cut. Our angles are working out perfect. We're going to cut the other two and get that laid out and ready. We finally landed on 4 foot 6 for our gusset that's going to go across here. Got one right here. We just need to make up just a little bit to get the length we need. And I'm not worried about it because some of these have already been welded like that before. And these were used to hold up a giant concrete foundation wall that we backfilled. So they're going to hold. Got that tacked. I'm going to burn it in more when we get the buzz box out and assemble everything. When we weld this together, we're going to need a plate for these pipes to butt into right underneath the beam. 
Hello kitty. Our beam's about four inches long. We're gonna want that plate to come out here, oh, about 16 or 18 inches. So the plan is to keep it about a foot wide back here, come out about six inches, and then taper it down to four inches. That'll give us enough room to put bolts in here and bolt it to the beam. the two plates for the top. Don't want to move our mock-up yet because I'm still measuring a few things here. I'm going to cut a gusset here. It's going to come down about eight inches, come across. It'll be that half inch plate like we're going to use on the top to go under the beam. I'm going to cut this right here and we'll cut this in half and that'll be our gusset for the top. And this width is going to give us plenty. We're at 13 inches. But we're going to have to trim these angles off here. We're going to cut something a little like this. And there's our top gussets. Gonna be about like that. Those are done. All right. It'll overlap this top place here by half an inch so we can weld this seam. This thing's gonna be super strong. We want a gusset that'll come out of here and out into under the beam. So they're gonna be just a triangle shape. Let me cut those. Let's make the top gusset 16 by seven. two gussets underneath this plate here nice just like so and then this will be on the outside of course got the caster up here on the bench I'm gonna trace it out so I can make a template so that we can drill our holes in the bottom of the legs on the stand for the gantry crane and we want to get those drilled before we start assembling anything because they're not going to be easy to drill once we start welding pipes onto there. I'll be using a 7 16 punch to punch out the corners of my template. And we're going to be using 7 16 bolts as well. That's the biggest ones I could get that'll fit in these casters. And we're going to use grade 8. There we go, that'll give us something to go by. It's getting cold out here. I got all the big pieces cut. 
Everything we need to put this together should be ready. Uh, the only thing that we're going to do later is the cross brace between here and here. We want to do that after we get these welded to the legs down here and everything put together so we can get our exact measurements. I think we're ready to put this together on the next one. I do want to thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next one. We've sourced the parts that we're going to need to get this Ganty... I'm very excited because we've sourced all the parts we're going to need to get this Gantry train... Train. Nope.